Welcome back for another live tutorial. I am excited to be with you here today. Uh, I'm really excited to show you what we're going to draw. Um, we're going to draw this cozy cabin and we're gonna do it in day and night. And to go from day to night is actually really easy and I'm really excited to show you that because it's, it's I think it's gonna maybe be a little game changer if you wanna like start doing night scenes. Um, so that's what we're gonna be drawing today. Like, it's really cool, you guys. Like, I was blown away when she showed me the night picture first and then was like, oh, yeah, and I did this. Uh, here's my cool day shot. Yeah. Um, so I am Lisa Bardot. Uh, that's me, and I've got three little kids, and my husband, Jeff, is here. He also works with Bardo Brush and he does all the behind the scenes kind of stuff for these lives and he's managing the um, the comments. So if you guys have anything you want to say or any questions while we're doing this, feel free to pop in and he will shout those out to me. And I'm also the owner of Bardo Brush. I make awesome brushes for Procreate and other educational type content such as this to teach you how to draw and to find your creative prowess, as I like to say. Um, and the other really exciting thing today is we're giving away an iPad on this live. So you must be present to win, and I'm going to show you the slide where you can go to enter. So at bardobrush.com slash giveaway, if you go to that site, you can enter, um, and we will pull the winner at the, end of the, uh, the end of this live, and you have to be here to claim it. We're going to have you like shout out, it's me in the comments, and then also send us an an email um, using the email that you put in when you enter here. So make sure you put in a valid email there. <laughs> and of course, it is only for people that in countries where we can ship an iPad to from Apple or Amazon. So sorry if you're not in a in a country that's applicable. We'll try to do the best we can with that. But if you if we pull your name and you're in the wrong country, we'll do something else for you. So all right. So Jeff's gonna put that website in the comments, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let's draw. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Procreate. And I'm going to create a new canvas. And the canvas size that I'm gonna be using today is 3800 by 2800 pixels. I have this saved because this is the size I use a lot. So 3800 by 2800 pixels, but it's gonna be like a horizontal kind of orientation. All right. So today we're going to be using Procreate's perspective guide feature to sketch out our house. And I actually just released a tutorial about using the perspective guide. Um, if you go to my website, I'll just show it to you real quick. If you go to my website and go to the tutorials page and then go to the recent tutorials, this one right here, drawing with perspective. If you've never drawn in perspective um, or if you're confused about perspective, I think this will really help you out a lot and it makes it really easy to draw a scene in perspective. And I also have this free worksheet for, it's a Procreate file for you to learn, um, follow along in the tutorial and learn about perspective. So I would check that out, but I'm gonna kind of go over a little bit of that, just not quite as in depth as this tutorial. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the Procreate drawing guide. So to do that, we're gonna go to the actions menu, canvas, and then here where it says drawing guide, we're just gonna go ahead and toggle that on. And you'll see like a grid will pop up, um, which is not exactly what we want. So we're gonna go where it says edit drawing guide. And we'll get into here. And then down here, there's some options and you're gonna click or tap where it says perspective. And there's not gonna be anything on the screen because screen, we need to set up a vanishing point. And the drawing we're doing today is going to be in two point perspective. So we need to put two points on our screen. So what was the size of your canvas real quick, Lisa? It was uh, 3,800 by 2,800. Thanks. Okay, so we're gonna tap in two points on the screen, just like that. And you'll see these two little dots pop up. And basically these are the vanishing points for perspective. All the lines converge to that uh, vanishing point. And this is our horizon line is what this line is. Don't worry about the technicals too much. Just kind of follow along if you're not quite sure what I mean by that. Um, I'm gonna actually zoom way out and I'm gonna edit where these points are. And I'm actually going to drag them like way far out like that. And what this does when you like extend your um, vanishing points out 
it makes your perspective a little less distorted, a little more like compressed. Um, so that's why I'm doing that. And I kind of talk about that in that perspective tutorial too. And then I'm also gonna raise up the points above the canvas, something like that. And do a little bit more. Just kind of making sure that this line is level, like it's straight. There's a grid back there so you can see. So that's kind of what I'm at. And raising this horizon line up, what that does is it, oops, not straight, there we go. It makes it look like you're looking down on something and that's kind of the angle that I want to do for this drawing. I don't want to be like looking up on the house. I want to be like looking down so you can see the roof and everything like that. So that's what I'm doing here and just making sure it's straight. And uh, then when you're done, go ahead and click done. And it should look something like that. All right, and so now um, I actually forgot one thing, which is to turn on Drawing Assist. And you can do that in, when you go to Edit Drawing Guide, there's a toggle here, Assisted Drawing. And you just turn that on. Oops, I didn't mean to change the color. There we go, done. <laughs> uh, or you can go up to the layer and you can tap it and you can tap where it says Drawing Assist. But you just want to make sure that in the layers, it says assisted right underneath like layer one. So make sure that's turned on. And what that does, that means that anywhere you draw now is going to snap to these perfectly lines in perspective. You can't draw any like <laughs> curved lines or anything like that. So that's what that means. And that's going to help us draw this house. So I'm going to grab my favorite um, sketching brush. So it's just the Bardo pencil, actually one that I've been updating. I have an update for that set coming out soon. So it's just an updated version of the pencil box Bardo pencil. But you can use any pencil brush you want. Then I'm going to grab like a medium dark gray, and then I can start sketching out my house. As you're sketching this on the grid, someone's asking, can you change the color of the grid? Yeah, that's actually what I accidentally did. <laughs> Um, is if you, you can um, select your points if you tap on it and then you can move this bar and choose the color that you want. Um, so yeah, you can do that. And, and I actually, I need to, I need to provide some feedback to Procreate because the done button is so close to this line where it changes the lines to like almost white that I accidentally changed them to white all the time. So I'm going to give them some feedback. <laughs> Love you, Procreate. Love you to death. Um, <laughs> okay, so we're going to draw our house and I'm going to start down here. Um, and I don't want it to, I don't want to start, make my house too high to start with because I want to make sure I have room for the roof. So I'm going to draw it pretty small in my canvas. And the first thing that I do is draw the footprint of the house. So this is going to be like, I'm going to make it long on one side and a little bit shorter on the other, kind of like that. Let me do that again. There we go. So maybe... Something like that. And then starting where this line ends, you're gonna draw over and you kinda wanna make sure you, I'm gonna zoom in a bit, go over and start there. And you just wanna make sure that the lines intersect and it's okay if they overlap just a little bit. Um, but that's gonna be like the footprint of the house, okay? So I just draw like a parallelogram essentially. And now I'm gonna draw the height of the house. So. Just draw lines going up, and then from the end of that line, draw a line going over, and then from this little corner here, draw a line going up. And so now we have the side of the house. You just wanna make sure that everything connects. That's the important thing when you're doing these perspective sketches and using this drawing assist, is you wanna make sure that all the corners line up just nicely. And now that we know this line, I can draw a line here, and then I can connect it there didn't quite get it all the way that's okay yeah yeah that's close enough okay um so now we got the next wall and i am going to draw all the walls even the ones like that you can't really see so i'm going to draw this one and then connect it there oops i'm to make sure they connect good like that and then like that so now we've got a box, essentially, and that's gonna be the bottom of the house. And I can already tell that I think I drew it too high because <laughs> I really, I wanted to have a nice tall roof. Um, so if you do that, I think that you can add some more space just by going to crop and resize and adding more space at the top. 
and that shouldn't mess with the, yeah, okay. And that shouldn't mess with your guides or anything. So if you don't have enough room, you can always add more with the crop and resize feature. Okay, so we've got, um, we've got our box here. I'm gonna add on like a door right here. Oops, a little too wide, there we go. And a couple windows. And because we have that drawing guide thing turned on, all of our lines are perfectly straight. So we have some windows that I've added. And then the next thing I'm gonna draw is the roof. And if you guys, as I'm doing this, if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the chat and Jeff will ask them to me. Um, if, if they're questions like related to what I'm drawing and then we're gonna do a Q&A, like a general Q&A if you have something unrelated to this at the end. So feel free to throw up your questions and Jeff will write them down so he can ask me later. Okay, so now we're gonna add like a roof like this. Um, that's like a triangle. <laughs> so because we can't draw those like diagonal lines because of the perspective guides, all I'm gonna do is draw a line up from the center like from the center of this point here, you guys can see that, up to the total height that I want my roof to be. So I think I'll make a pretty tall roof and that's where the, the top of the roof is gonna go. And then if I draw a line over, this is gonna be like the top roof line. And then I can take, draw a line up from the center of this side of the house up to connect there. Oops, let me connect that a little better. There we go. So that's like the total height of the room. It kind of looks like a caddy, like a little carrying box with a handle. Um, but we're gonna add these lines that connect down like the triangle diagonal lines in a little bit. So don't worry about that quite yet. Um, and then the other thing that I'm going to add is a chimney. Um, and I wanna add like a chimney that comes off the side of the house and it's like one of those stone chimneys that's outside the house. So that's gonna be here. So I'm gonna draw the bottom of the chimney coming out from the side of the house. So this is gonna be like the footprint of the chimney. I'm gonna make it pretty wide. And it's actually gonna be a chimney that kind of like tapers as it goes to the top. Um, but we can't do that taper part just yet. So we're just gonna draw some lines straight up to get the total height of the chimney. So extend above the roof like that. And then from there, up, so something like that. Okay, and now I'm gonna draw the top of the chimney. So I'm gonna draw just a line like that, and then a line like that, and then this, something like that. There we go, so that's like the top of the chimney. And that's pretty much it for the perspective sketch. That's all that we need to do. So, um, Everybody everybody doing good, I hope. I'm gonna go ahead and continue on to the next part after I drink some of my tea. <laughs> Someone was asking a good question, like, are you drawing this from a reference? How, how do you know how to draw this? Um, that's a really great question. And for something like a house, I've been drawing houses since I was a kid. I think that's probably one of the like, one of the first things most kids probably try to draw is like a picture of a, a, you know, grass with a tree and a house and a sun. I feel like that's every kid's first like scene that they draw. <laughs> so I've been drawing houses for a while. So I'm not really working from a reference, but I did see a reference for this chimney. That's why I wanted to do it. Um, so n yeah, a, li a little bit, a little bit from imagination, a little bit from reference. Um, so good question. Okay, so now we're ready to... Um, we're ready to turn off the perspective guide because we don't need it anymore. So we're gonna go to the layers menu. We're gonna tap on the layer, just anywhere on that layer, and then we're gonna uncheck drawing assist, turn that off. And then I'm actually going to turn off the perspective guide as well. So where it goes to the, or sorry, go to the actions menu, canvas, drawing guide, turn it off, okay? All right, so now we can draw the other lines for the roof and things like that. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a line from this point, the middle of the roof, down here. And if you hold, you don't lift your pencil up, it'll make like a straight line. This is called quick line. And that'll kind of help you make that like perfectly straight line down. And I'm gonna do that again here. There we go, like that. And then one here. And then I like to do it completely in 3D, even though you won't see this line back here, just in case I need to reference it. Okay. 
All right. So now we're gonna go ahead and refine this sketch because this is like the most boring house in the world. It's just like straight lines, no character. Um, and this is just basically a guide that we're going to use uh, to draw like our sketch with more character in our own like art style. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to layers menu. I'm gonna tap N and then I'm gonna reduce the opacity like that just so I can just barely see it. And then I'm gonna create a new layer on top. All right, and I'm gonna actually start with this chimney because I said we want it to taper at the top. So this is how we're gonna do that. We're gonna go to the top of the chimney and I'm gonna draw basically a smaller top within this little shape here. So kind of like in the center of the chimney, I'm drawing, and you want these lines to be the same angle as these lines, so I'm kind of fiddling with that a little bit. So they should be the same angle. I mean, I don't mind if it's a little wonky, like I like wonky illustrations, so that's what we're doing here. And then I'll just draw the top. So we're drawing like a smaller top within that bigger top. And then we're gonna do what we did with the roof, which is just draw a line from, I'll start with this outer point right there, all the way down to this point here. And hold down, don't let go, and you'll get your quick line thing. And there you go. And then we're gonna do it from this point here all the way down. There we go. And then from this point here down to the respective point at the bottom. So from there, oops, I can't see it. There we go. Gotta make sure I can see the bottom. There we go. So now we have like this cool tapered chimney. Now we can start sketching in the rest by hand. I'm not gonna use like super straight lines for everything else. Um, this is just a sketch. This isn't like the final art anyways. So I'm gonna draw in the roof next. And the other thing I'm gonna do with the roof is I'm actually going to extend it beyond this part right here. Because if you know roof, like they overhang over the like boxy part of the house um, a little bit. So that's why it's gonna extend down. And you can actually give it a little more character um, by going straight and then you could even like curve it out. So it's like a little curved roof line, whatever you want to do. That's what I'm going to do. Whoop, like that. So it kind of slopes like that just for fun. And then I'm going to do the same back here, this little line that comes out, kind of like swoop it out. And then I need to draw a line for like the back of that roof shape. Then I'm going to draw the house. So you can see what I did there. This line is the same angle as this line, just so you know. And I'm just gonna trace over all this stuff here, here. There we go. Uh, oops, and this one here. All right, now we're gonna add some details, um, just roughly, because this isn't the final art, but I think I'm gonna add some like oversized looking shingle things. Almost like you would see on a gingerbread house. Kind of like exaggerate, exaggerated shingles. There we go. Something like that. And then the door, I'm gonna go ahead and sketch that in. There would be a doorknob right there. And also some window panes. And these lines, again, in perspective, should be the same angle as these lines. They should all be parallel. And then these, this line this way should be the same angle as this line. You could have used the drawing guide to do this, but I think some things are just easy enough to do by hand. And also, again, I don't care if it's perfect. I don't like it being perfect. That's my preference. Okay. And then I'm also going to add some little, like, windowsill type things here. Um, cool. So that's looking pretty good. Um, I can turn off this layer now. And that's like our kind of hand drawn sketch of the house. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually shrink this down because I want to add some smoke coming from the chimney and some other things too. So I'm just going to tap the so, um, transform <laughs> the little arrow icon transform and that'll select my whole layer and then I can just like shrink it down. I don't know, I wanna have enough room for all the smoke. 
Let's see. Yeah, that's probably about good. Okay, good. Okay, so now I'm going to add um, some smoke. And for the smoke, I'm doing this kind of like, I'm gonna have it come up and then like swoop around like that. And then I'm gonna have it come up this way and kind of come in. I don't like that, so maybe a bit bigger. Kind of get a feel for how you want to do it. Oops. These kind of like swoopy lines I usually like. Takes me a while to get them exactly how I want them to be. Uh. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, the other two things I want to add are a couple trees. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I'm losing my voice. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and some mounds of snow in front. So we're going to draw a tree. I'm just going to draw like a straight line down here, like next to the side of the house. Be over a little bit more. And then I'm just going to draw like a big triangle for the tree. And actually, I'm going to go over a little bit more. Kind of want it to go behind the house a bit. Okay, so there's a tree. And then these are gonna be like branches. And then one more over here, maybe a little bit smaller. What brush are you using right now? I'm just using my pencil brush, Bardo pencil. Um, it's actually an updated version of it. I'm working on an update for that set, but any pencil brush will work because this is just a sketch. Okay, so we've got some trees, and then we're gonna add just some piles of snow. So I'm gonna draw like a, a regular lump kind of thing. Sorry, there we go. Kind of make it come like that. There's one lump. There's another lump. And I'll do one more over here. Kind of want it to, there we go. Okay, so that's the whole sketch, you guys. I'm gonna curve this one around a little bit more. Okay, great. Okay, so there is our finished sketch. Just gonna refine this little bit here. Kind of looked like it was going whoop up like that. All right, <laughs> okay, so there's our finished sketch, um, and now we're gonna move on to coloring. So do we have any questions about anything I've done so far before we move on to coloring? Any questions, Jeff? Uh, it'll be just a second as they come up. Um, and know, you guys, that we're only answering and asking questions about this specific moment right yeah. now. Yeah. If you have other questions that are like about other things in Procreate or art or whatever, I will definitely answer all those questions. We'll do that at the end. Um, but we're going to ask questions about this. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. And if Jeff um, sees some questions, he'll just shout them out to me. Okay. So like I said, we're ready to color. Uh, we're going to go to the layers menu. We're going to tap N, and then we're going to reduce the opacity of the sketch. And, and real quick, just because we're talking sketches, do you limit your sketch to a single layer for a reason? Um, you know, that's a really good question. I don't, not necessarily. Like, see these trees, how I, like, drew it, and then I moved it over? If I had put that tree on another layer, I could have, like, moved it easier and not had to redraw it. So sometimes I do sketches in a bunch of layers. Um, it depends on how much I want to be able to manipulate things independently. So that's a really good question. I might have done this uh, in multiple layers, but I was trying to keep it simple for you guys. So yeah. yeah. And people are asking, right, are the trees on a different layer? The answer is? I have, um, I only have two layers right now. One is the perspective sketch, and then the other one is the, um, the house with all the detail and everything like that. But we're ready, we're gonna add another layer now. So I'm gonna tap on the first layer, and then I'm gonna tap the little plus to add a new layer, and that just puts this layer below the layer with this refined sketch. I, I always keep my sketch on top, and then on the sketch layer, so the top layer, go to where it says N, and then these are blend modes, which we're gonna be using today, and I'll kind of explain that a little bit later. Um, but we're gonna set this blend mode to multiply. I always do that with my sketches because it makes it so it's easier to see it, like darkens it, um, no matter what's underneath it. So just makes it a little bit 
easier to see. All right, so now we're gonna get into brushes. And for this drawing, the one I showed you earlier, I used a lot of different brushes from a lot of different sets. I was just kind of like experimenting and like trying different things. So I'll go through and I'll tell you what all the brushes are. And then I'll tell you like what sort of brush, if you don't have that brush, um, you could possibly use. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw in all the flat shapes of my drawing. So I'm gonna use a brush from my basic toolkit called um, Bardo Inker Streamline. And this is just a really like opaque brush with a little bit of texture along the edges. It's really good for filling in shapes. So any type of like really solid brush will do um, the job for this. All right, um, so the first thing I'm actually gonna do before I start coloring in, I'm gonna change my background color. So I'm going to the layers panel, going to where it says background color, and then I'm gonna choose um, like a, like a light kind of almost kind of muted um, aqua color. So that's the color I'm using for the background. And then for the brush itself, I'm going to use, I'm actually gonna use like a brighter version of that color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap and hold and just select that color. And then I'm gonna go up to the color picker and then I'm gonna get like a brighter version. I think I'm gonna get a little warmer. So it's something Kind of like that. That's the color that I'm using. Okay. All right. And so now I'm just going to draw the shape of the house itself. What am I doing? I'm on the wrong layer. <laughs> Make sure you're on the middle layer, guys. <laughs> I was on the sketch layer, so we're going to make sure we're on the, the new layer that we made. Um, all right, cool. So I'm just going to make my brushes a little bit bigger. I'm just going to draw this whole shape here. And I'm not trying to be too precise because I like it to be a little wonky, like I said. Um, but, you know, kind of follow the lines that you put in on your sketch. So I'm just kind of doing an outline of the whole thing. And then once I have an outline, I can use color drop. So you just drag this little circle and you drop it and then it'll fill that whole shape in. It's very handy. Um, so I just did the house and now I'm gonna create a new layer to do like different, all the different pieces. So go into the layers panel and I'm gonna hit the plus sign and now we're gonna do the roof, okay? So I just add in a new layer to do the roof. I'm gonna get like a darker version of that same color. So just kind of like went down to this little area over here. The darker you go, the darker to get. The more you go this way, it'll get like a more muted color and then more saturated the closer you go that way. So I'm like around there. And then I'm gonna draw the roof. And I'm just tracing over what I already drew. and fill that in with color drop. Perfect. And then also draw this part too. And then here, I'm just gonna draw to that point right there and kind of fill in that little spot. I don't wanna overlap this part of the house because it's supposed to look like it's behind the house. So I just kind of colored it in. Okay, so we got a roof. Um, let's do the chimney. So I'm gonna create another new layer for the chimney. And the reason I'm putting these on their own layers is because they all like overlap each other and I wanna be able to manipulate them independently later on. So all these things that touch each other or overlap each other will go on a new layer. So go ahead and create another new layer. And then I'm gonna get like, like a gray, kind of a little bit below center there. And then I'm going to draw the chimney. And I'm trying to get a good angle. Try it again. And I'm drawing the whole 3D shape as one flat color. Okay. Okay, great, <laughs> got the whole thing outlined and then I'm gonna fill it in with color drop. All right, cool, we're getting there. We got the chimney done. Um, let's go ahead and do the doors and the windows. I'm gonna do those both on one layer. Um, 
I could do them on the same layer as the, the chimney, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to, for some, for, I'm just going to, I like to keep things separate on separate layers. Uh, if you have like a less powerful iPad um, or um, an older iPad, you don't get as many layers. So you can put things that don't touch each other on the same layer, but we're not going to use too many layers for this. So, okay, let's do the, the doors and the windows now. So I created another layer and I'm going to do the door in the same color as the roof. So I'm just going to select that color and I'm going to draw in the door. And fill it in. And then for the windows, I'm gonna choose like a like a really light yellow. Like really pale yellow. So that's the yellow that I'm using for the windows. Maybe a little warmer. There we go. And then I'm just gonna draw those in. All right, cool. Okay, um, let's do the trees next. Um, so I'm gonna create a new layer and the trees are behind the house. So that layer needs to be behind all these other ones. So I'm just gonna tap at the bottom layer, hit the plus, and then my new layer will be behind everything else. For the trees, I'm gonna start, I'm kind of, I'm kind of using these colors as a base and like changing them based on those colors. So I'm gonna use, select this green color, bluey green. And I'm gonna make the trees just like a greener version of that color. Um, maybe like a little, little darker. Let me see how that looks. Yeah, I think that'll look good. And then I'll just draw in the tree. These are just triangles, really easy. Boom. And this one over here. There we go. I think that's looking pretty good. I'll make this one a little wider. Okay. All right. Um, so we still have to do the smoke. And I think I'll just put the smoke here on the same layer since it doesn't touch. Like I said, it doesn't matter if it doesn't touch. So I'm going to choose white. And I'm going to just draw in the shape. Actually, um, which layer, by the way, is set to multiply? Uh, it was the sketch. So the one with the pencil lines. Um, and I know I said I was gonna do this on the same layer, but I just I changed my mind. I'm actually not gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna create a layer that's above everything else now, because I, I want part of the smoke to be over the chimney, so it looks like it's coming out of the chimney. Um, so I'm actually creating a new layer for the chimney smoke. So go ahead and hit the plus, and we'll create a new layer. And then we'll draw in that shape. And I, I'm gonna make it overlap the chimney a little bit. I'll show you why in a second. Okay, cool. Make sure it's a closed shape before you use uh, color drop, color fill. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually um, going to select the same brush I've been using as an eraser. So I'm gonna tap and hold it and that'll choose the same um, ink or streamline brush as the eraser so that I can erase here where it pops out of the chimney. So there we go. So that's like that top edge. So now it looks like it's behind the edge. It's kind of crooked. There we go. So now it looks like it's coming out. And then on the same layer, I'm gonna go ahead and do the snow. Since they're both white, <laughs> that'll be fine. They're both not touching. So I'm just gonna draw in these mounds and fill them in. Okay, cool. So we've got all of our shapes as flat, um, flat shapes all filled in. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is start adding some texture to this drawing um, because I don't really like super flat color. I like my, even if it's like a solid color, I like it to have a bit of texture. Um, and so to do that, I'm actually gonna be using brushes from my wash and dry watercolor toolkit. It's these three sets right here. Um, so I'm going to go into the wash set and you can use, 
you know, any brush that has a lot of texture, like there's some brushes that are like big brushes with lots of texture. They're better for adding texture to flat things. Um, and that's what these brushes do. So the brush that I'm going to be using is Stone Wash from the Wash Set. And the other thing that I need to do before I start doing that is I'm actually going to turn on Alpha Lock on all of these layers. I'm not really going to be um, changing the shape of any of these flat shapes anymore. So I'm just going to turn on Alpha Lock and that will lock those shapes into place and will just let me add texture within those shapes. So you if you take two fingers, you can swipe to the right or you can tap on a layer and you can um, tap... Uh, Alpha lock, <laughs> alpha lock. So tap alpha lock. And you'll notice that there's like a grid behind, like a checkerboard kind of pattern behind the layer image. That's how you know it's on. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the roof. And I'm gonna select this same color as the roof. And with this stone wash brush that I'm using, it it will it will darken. It darkens every time you add a brush stroke. So that's what you'll see like starting to happen. I'll make it real big. And you'll see like a subtle texture. If I zoom in, you kind of see that. I'm just kind of like adding it until it looks like I want it to. And if it starts getting too dark, if you don't like how dark it gets, um, the set also has a brush called, um, it's in the wash and dry tools. It's another little mini set that comes with this set. And it's called Color Lifter. And this brush, color lifter, and this brush will lighten things up. So, and it will also add some texture too. So if it was getting too dark, you can lighten it up like that. And I'm kind of making a little bit, my texture a little bit irregular because I think it adds more character. And I'm just very lightly pressing down. If I press down hard, it'll, it'll be really intense. Um, so I'm just pressing down really lightly. And I can't forget this area over here. And I'm kind of switching back and forth between the wash brush, which darkens and the light brush or the color lifter brush with which brightens. I'm thinking of doing a whole set of this, which is like texture brushes that lighten and darken because they're like my favorite way to add texture that looks kind of photorealistic. Um, so I'm, I've got that brewing in my head. <laughs> Look forward to that in the future. Um, okay, roof is looking good. I'm gonna do the house. So I'm going to the layer with the house. I'm selecting that color, same color. And again, I've got the stone wash brush. Any of these wash brushes will do it, but this one has a texture that I like. And I'm just adding a little bit of texture so you can kind of see the texture. And I'm gonna switch back to the color lifter brush in the tool set. Just kind of making it look, you know, however much texture I wanna have. I think that looks good. But before I move on from the house, I'm gonna add some, um, I'm gonna make this side of the house darker. So to do that, I'm gonna actually just use a selection tool. So if you go up to the selection tool and I'm just gonna select this line right here. See, I just kind of trace down there and then I'm selecting the rest of it like that. So now I just have like this side of the house selected and then I'm gonna go back to that wash brush, the stone wash brush and I'm gonna use it to just darken it even more. So that'll make it look, and if I, whoops, turn that off. If I take off my sketch, probably see a little bit better. So you can see now that there is like this side that's darker. Okay, I'm gonna turn the sketch back on. Okay, cool. So um, I'm gonna do, let's do the trees now. I'm gonna do the trees in the same way. Real quick, which layer are you on? I was just on the one with the house. So with the house shape, this whole shape. Um, and now I'm moving on to the trees. And again, I have alpha lock turned on all these layers. So I'm gonna select the tree color. Um, I've still got my stone wash brush selected. I'm just adding some texture. I kind of like to do a bunch of layers on them. The more you like layer on strokes, like lift your pencil and do another one, the, the texture kind of gets, it compounds on itself. So it's really great for that. And then I'm gonna go back to the color lifter brush and kind of lighten them up a little bit. So I'm kind of like getting them back to their original color, like darkening it and lighting it back to the original color, but they're different because now they have all that great texture. So, cool. Um, let's do the chimney. Go to the layer with the chimney, select that same gray color. 
I have the color lifter selected first, that's fine. And then go to the wash and kind of darken it back down. And this one, I'm gonna need to add some shading to it as well, but I'm actually gonna do it in kind of a different way. So um, I guess I'll do that right. Actually, I'm gonna do these doors first and then I'll come back to that. So let's go to the layer with the doors and windows. So that layer, select this green color. And now because these two things are on the same layer, you have to be a little bit careful not to get your color on the window. So you can either get your brush size smaller and do it that way, uh, or you could just select this area around the door and then go for it. It will only draw on the door. So either way, I have it selected right now. Going back to the color lifter. There we go. Kind of, it's probably a little too light. There you go. Okay. And now um, I'm gonna do the windows too, just add a little bit texture to those. You can't even really see it that much because they're so light, but you know what, trying to be consistent. Whoops, too big of a brush size. There we go, cool. Um, all right. So the only thing we haven't done yet is the smoke and the snow, um, but I'm gonna do that in a minute. I'm actually gonna focus on this chimney now. I wanna add like a brick pattern to the chimney, um, and I'm gonna do that with a clipping mask. So I'm gonna go to the layer with the chimney, hit the plus sign, and then I'm gonna tap that new layer that was just created, and I'm gonna hit clipping mask. And this means that I create, whatever I draw on this layer now, will be, I can only draw within this shape, kind of like alpha lock, but it's on a separate layer. So that's what makes it different. And the brush I'm gonna be using for the bricks is from my mid-century illustrators kit and it's called Crayon. Um, and if you use it at a really large size, it looks really brick-like, so, or it looks kind of like a stylized brick. So that's when I was experimenting. I fi figured that out and it made me really happy. So I'm gonna select this gray color and then I'm gonna get like a lighter version of it. And yeah, if you use it at a, at a really big, oh, that's probably too dark, too light still. That's a little bit better. Um, so yeah, it looks kind of, it's a very squarish brush and it's got a lot of texture. So I was like, oh, that's kind of perfect for a brick. Um, but you could always draw the bricks by hand and then add texture, but this kind of just makes a lot faster. So I'm just gonna kind of draw these in at the same angle. Kind of in a brick pattern where it like overlaps. So you can kind of see that. This is probably too too light the color, um, but that's okay because I can. And and I'm and I'm not worrying about this side that's like a different angle. I'm just um, kind of like drawing them over the edge of this line, and then I'm gonna erase away. You'll see in just a second. So I'm just kind of drawing in a brick pattern. Not super perfect. These are kind of like, it's like a stone fireplace. That's kind of the look that I'm going for. Oops, kind of getting off here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now we've got like a brick pattern. If I zoom out, you can you can see it now. I really, I was very, very happy when I discovered that. This looks great. Um, so uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to erase everything that's not on this like side of the chimney, this front side. So I'm gonna use, I'll just use the ink or streamline that I was using to do all the shapes as my eraser. It's the one I already had set as my eraser. Oops. Ah. Huh. 
And the reason why I'm doing this is because, um, like you can see these, you know, they should kind of go this angle because of the perspective. So I'm gonna draw them in at that angle. And one more time, can you uh, tell us the, uh, the brush set that the yeah, uh, brush Yeah, that was on? from Mid-Century Illustrator's kit. Mid-century, and it was crayon, the crayon brush. At a really big size, like that's a really, I made it as big as it could go. Okay, all right, so now that I've erased away, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, on the same layer, just draw in the bricks going the other way, kind of like that. So now they're kind of like going this way at the same angle as this line, like all these lines here. I hope that makes sense. If you need me to explain it better, let me know. <laughs> um, but it kind of looks like it's going the like in perspective the right way. <laughs> That's the idea here. Oops, that one could be there. And again, I'm just not making them all perfect. All right, that's pretty good. So you can kind of see they're going like that way now. And I think that they're like way too light in color. So I'm actually gonna just make them a little darker. And to do that, I'll actually use my, um, my wash brush to do that since I wanna add some texture. So I'm gonna go to the layer with all the bricks. That's the clipping mask. You'll know it's a clipping mask because it has this little arrow. If I were to turn off the clipping mask, you see how like, that stuff is actually there. You just can't see it because it's confined to the shape of the layer below it. Um, so I'm gonna turn on alpha lock on this clipping mask layer. You can use them in conjunction. It's pretty great. Um, so turn on alpha lock on the layer with the bricks. I'm gonna go back to my wash brushes, stone wash, and I'm just gonna make it big again. I'm just gonna go over it a few times until they're like the color that I want them to be. Kind of want them to be a little bit more subtle so i think that looks pretty good okay all right so yeah i think that looks pretty good it's a little bit more subtle okay so now i need to make um part of i need to make this side of it darker just like that this side of the house is darker is in shadow i need to make this side of the chimney in shadow so i'm going to use another layer to do that set as a clipping mask so i'm going to go ahead and hit the plus sign again in my layers panel i'm going to tap that layer and i'm going to hit clipping mask and if they're like right on top of each other, they'll clip to the same layer. So these two will both clip to this chimney layer. Um, and then I'm actually going to make a selection around the chimney, just like I did with the house. I'm gonna select around like this. So following this line that I drew on my sketch, that's why I didn't turn off my sketch yet. And then drawing around that, okay? So now I just have like that side of the chimney selected. And then um, I'm gonna I'm gonna fill it with this gray that I have selected. I think that should be dark enough. Okay, so I just filled it in. How did you make the brush the bricks darker again? I ha um I used the wash brush, so I turned on a clipping. I turned alpha lock on that brick layer. I turned on alpha lock, and then I darkened them with that wash brush, just as I, as I had been darkening the house. Um, like I had lightened and darkened it to add the texture. I just darkened it. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so now I've got this gray filled in that layer. And then I'm going to use a blend mode to make everything below it darker. So I'm going to tap the N. I'm going to change it to multiply. And it's actually not dark enough. So um, I'm going to make this color darker and drop it in there again. Maybe a little darker. There we go. All right, I hope that makes sense. So <laughs> we have like this little selection with a dark gray and the blend mode is set to multiply and that makes everything below it dark. Like it makes the, the chimney and the bricks all darker. Blend modes are a little confusing. I need to make a, every time I use a blend mode, I'm like, I need to make blend mode tutorial. <laughs> I'll do it you guys next year, I promise. Um, <laughs> 
Okay, so we've got the chimney looking good. Um, what else do we need to do? We need to do this. And what I'm going to do for this to make it look kind of like it fades off is I'm actually going to erase part of it away. So for this, I decided I would use my texture maker set. And this is a set that has like a bunch of different texture brushes that do different effects. Um, so any brush that has a lot of texture will, will be good for this. Um, but I'm using the one that's called Texture Press Fine from the Texture Maker. So it's Press Fine from the Texture Maker. And then I'm just gonna make my brush a little bit bigger. And I don't think I'm on the right layer. Nope. Okay, so I need to go to the layer with the smoke. Um, and I actually need to make sure I set that brush as my eraser. So again, we're going to go to the eraser and we're going to go to texture maker, press fine. All right. <laughs> Sorry, that was a little confusing. And then I'm just going to erase part of it away. Like I'm going to erase more of it away at the top than at the bottom. So it looks kind of like it's fading off. I want all of it to have some texture. So I'm going to make sure I go over the whole thing, but I'm going to go over more of it at the top until it kind of like fades off, kind of like that. I'll turn off the sketch so you can see. So that's what that looks like. And maybe I'll erase a little bit more away up here. Okay. And then, um, cool. Let me know if you have any questions about that. And then I'm gonna go down here to the snow. And for those, I'm going to actually draw in some texture. So I'm gonna select my brush, as the press fine. I'm gonna use this brush to like texturize my snow as well. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, snow is hard because it's white, but there, you can see it, like there's shading, like parts of it are darker and parts of it are lighter. If there's like a hill, like, and the light's coming from this way, this part will be a little bit darker. So I'm actually gonna tone down the white just a little bit, um, something similar to the background color. So I'm gonna select the background color Stick with me on this. And then I'm gonna get like a much lighter version of it. And then I'm gonna like paint in one of the sides. So I'm kind of doing a little bit over the whole thing, but then a little more on the side. So I'm like darkening this side a little bit. It's very subtle. And then I'm gonna get a little bit Darker version, just a little bit darker. You don't want to ever go too, too dark with snow because it's white. Darkening those sides just a little bit more. And we can kind of refine that more as we go. And then I'm going to put some snow on the ground. So I'm going to create a new layer underneath everything else. So one layer underneath everything else. And I'm going to grab white now, just pure white. And I want... To make sure I have, I'm afraid I don't have enough room at the bottom. So I'm actually going to change my canvas size by going to the actions menu, canvas, crop and resize, and just adding in a little bit more room at the bottom, a little more room at the top. Yeah, you can always use this to like reframe your picture as you go if you run out of space. Okay, girl. All right, and now I've got white, I've got the same texture press fine brush selected, and I'm just gonna like drawing some snow on the ground. I like that. You can make it go out as far as you want. You could make it go all the way across if you want, but this to me, the illustration is kind of like a spot illustration that's not like a full scene. It just like exists in kind of like <laughs> blank area, I don't know. Erase this. Actually, I'm gonna go up a little higher here. So yeah, you can make that go as high as you want, but. All right. Okay, cool, we're getting somewhere. Um, all right, so the next thing I'm going to do now is add in my line work. So I need to add in all the details. Um, and I usually do the line work at the end. That's kind of just my workflow. Um, so the, I'm gonna create a layer that is above everything else. I usually put it on a layer that's on top of everything else. That's kind of just how I do it. And I'm going to choose a liner brush 
Just something with some fun texture. I have lots and lots of liner brushes to choose from. Um, I forget which one that I was gonna use. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Let's see, I'll go to my gouache paint box. That's one of my favorite sets of all of the ones that I have. And I think I'll use the fine grain liner. But any brush that you, that has a little bit of texture can be, will be good for this. All right, so I'm gonna add some, these little lines here. I'm gonna choose this color. And while you're doing that, which was the brush for the snow? Uh, that was Press Fine from Texture Maker. Awesome. Okay, let's see how that looks. That's good. Make the brush size a little bigger. And I'm just kind of like drawing in these lines. Oops. That's kind of funky. Kind of just making sure there's like four little scallops in each line. Okay, so we got some details on the roof. Um, I'm gonna move this one up. Actually, I'm gonna move them all up a little bit. Cool. And then we need some details on the house and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna draw some like, um, what's this called, molding or, or whatever, trim around the windows. So I'm just gonna draw like a line around that. Kinda like that and then Do it here. This brush has a, a lot of texture. And then around the door, I'm gonna use actually a lighter color. Maybe I'll use the same color or maybe even a lighter version of this color. So I try to like keep reference, oops, did I not draw in this? I try to keep referencing colors I've already used um, and that will, um, help kind of keep the color palette more cohesive. So now I'm just choosing like a lighter version of that. No, it's still not light enough. Almost white. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that will keep your, your color palette more cohesive. There we go. And I'll just uh, I'll use this color for the door knob. So I use the same color for the door knob. All right, cool. And then the trees, I'm gonna choose this dark green, I think, here to draw in my detail on the trees. It's probably a little too dark. I'll lighten it up a little bit. Just kind of drawing some lines going out like that and do this one. We're almost there, you guys. Okay, and I think, I think I've got it all. I've done all the things. Um, I know I said these trees are too dark. Now they're kind of not dark enough. <laughs> so I'm gonna select these little parts with the tree line work. Select that part and then hit add. And then select that part. Making sure not to select the roof part. So if you ever like don't like the way the colors look but you don't wanna redraw it, you can, this is one way that I use to adjust colors. Um, go to adjustments menu, hue, saturation, brightness, layer. And then you can make them darker. I can make them more green. I think that looks a little bit better. All right, it's a little bit better for me. All right, turn off the sketch now. We're all done with that. Um, I just probably wanna add a little bit more shading on my snow piles. Um, so I'm just gonna go back to the snow pile layer, this one, and I'm gonna select that color, make it a little darker, and then just go back to my texture maker, where is it? Right there. Press fine brush. Kinda, there we go. I just wanna make sure you can see that they're like piles. All right, cool. That's it for the daytime house picture. Um, any questions before we turn this into a night scene? This part goes fast. 
Um, it's really easy, so I'm what excited about to show snow you. The trees? Oh, I forgot the snow. You're right. I just <laughs> that came to. Me. We forgot the snow on the trees and on the roof. Thank you, guys. Um, you're observant. <laughs> okay, so let's create a new layer for that above everything else. And for the snow, the brush I actually used was from my pencil box. And I just used Bardo Pencil because it's kind of got like a soft edge and it looked really like, like fluffy snow. So I'm going to choose white for the color. I'm going to make the brush size bigger, as big as I can. And then I'm going to draw like a kind of wavy thing happening and kind of a wavy thing right here. And then color it in. I can't believe I forgot the snow. Okay, cool. I'm gonna erase this away. Oop. Let's get my uh, basic toolkit to erase this little part here. Good. And then we need some snow down on the bottom. So we'll just kind of draw like an irregular wavy line like that. Color it in. Great. And then on the trees, maybe we need a little snow here. I don't know. Yeah, sure. And then on the trees, uh, just kind of something like that. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, however you want to do it. I'm going to do it like that. Great. One more. Okay. Cool. There. Now it's done. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions before I move on to doing the night part? Why is there a layer above everything? Uh, I think maybe you're talking about the sketch layer. If not, elaborate and I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, that was for my sketch. That layer above everything. All right, you guys, we are going to turn this into a nighttime scene. Um, so to do that, we're going to create one more layer. Well, two more layers, but we're going to create another layer above everything else. So this is on top of everything else. And we're going to fill the entire layer with kind of like a bluey, bluey, purpley kind of color. We'll adjust the color as we see how it looks, but... All right, so that's the color I'm gonna start with. It's kind of like here on the color wheel and there on the color disc, and then fill it in. Okay, and then we're going to um, go to the layer, tap N, and we're gonna change the blend mode to multiply. So you can imagine that the sun just went down and everything's in dark. <laughs> that's what we're seeing now. Um, and I think this is a little too dark and a little too, like the color isn't quite right. So I'm actually going to adjust the color of this layer. And like I said, I like to go to the adjustments menu, hue, saturation, brightness layer, and then I can make it a little, maybe less saturated or maybe a little, maybe a little brighter, less saturated, or I can make it more purple. I don't know. You kind of get the idea of like whatever. I don't know, make it look like kind of nighttimey. I think, I don't know. Darker. All right, that's good. I'm not going to go too crazy with it. So I just kind of adjusted it to make it look a little better. All right, so then from there, what we're going to do is we're actually going to erase parts of this filled in layer, like it's all filled in with that one color. We're going to erase parts of it away to show highlights of our nighttime scene. So I go to the eraser and I was just using, um, I was just going to use my pencil brush to do this because it's kind of soft. Um, and I'm just going to use that for doing all the highlight marks. So um, the first thing I want to do is erase like in the window because I imagine the lights are on inside. So those are going to be really bright. Okay. 
And then we're gonna start adding highlights on everything. You might need to reduce the brush size. So I'm gonna add a highlight going over this snow mound. I'm actually gonna make it brush bigger. Like that. And over this one too. And again, I'm just erasing away to reveal the colors that were underneath. And I got this one over here. Like that. Oh, you're starting to see it. Uh, the how are the tree. Um, I'm kind of really stylizing the highlight on the tree. Like it's not how a highlight on a tree would look. So I'm just kind of kind of like erase some lines like that. Just to kind of give it the effect that like something is happening over there. <laughs> That's obviously not how highlights might look on a pine tree, but you get the idea. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to do highlights on the snow. So I'm just again erasing. And I'm gonna erase this one too. I imagine this light is coming from the moon. That's what's causing all these highlights. Like there's like a bright full moon out right now and it's dropping all these highlights on parts of the house. Um, I don't know, maybe there would be one here on the chimney. You can't really see it anyways, but. Um, all right, here, I'm gonna do a smaller brush size and then just Maybe not that small. Some edges on the door. And on the window frames a little bit. Not trying to make it perfect. Yeah, I don't mind that it like doesn't exactly, it like kind of erases, like shows some of the house behind it. Like I don't mind that at all in the doorknob. Um, Cool, I think that's everything. I'm gonna try it on the chimney, but it might not, it might be too much. Well, actually, I kinda like that. So I'm erasing away part of the chimney too. Okay, and then um, the other thing is, I'm gonna add some little footprints. And this added, like I just did this for the night, one, um, I don't know, I just like the way it looked in the night picture, kind of gave it some interest, like someone had like walked up to the house and went in, especially since it's like mostly a dark scene. These aren't very good footprints, but you get the idea. Um, it gives it a little bit of interest, a little bit of story. So I added some little footprints there. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is add just a little bit of shadows to the snow mounds. And to do that, um, I just need to get a color that is darker than the color I used for this layer. So um, if I tap and hold that layer down, um, it'll just select that layer by itself. And um, and it's it's multiplying with the background color. So I actually need to turn off multiply back to normal. So this is the color that I actually use. Oh, and you know what? I guess I wasn't erasing at all. I was, uh... oh no, that ain't why I was erasing, sorry. Don't let me confuse you. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna select this color. So I had um, soloed out that layer by tapping and holding this little checkbox, and then I turned off multiply so that I can get to this color and select it. Okay, I hope you're with me on that one. Now I'm gonna turn it back to multiply and turn it back on, turn everything back on by tapping and holding that checkbox. Let me know if you didn't follow that. Sorry, that might've been a little confusing. Um, it says now I can select a darker version of that same color, just a little bit. And I still have my pencil brush selected and I'm gonna just like draw some shadows on the mounds, like on the sides of them, kind of underneath. And also like a little bit of a cast shadow going this way. 
soften it a little bit. If you turn the pencil brush on its side, it gets a little softer. And I'll do it on this side. And a little bit of cast shadow. And then I'm gonna go a little bit darker just to add a final little bit more. You don't have to go too crazy with these shadows. So I just add a little bit more darkness. So now we've got like some shadows on that side. Um, and then the last thing that I'm gonna do, this is the last thing in the picture, is I wanna draw some like glow coming from these windows. So I'm gonna create one more layer and I'm gonna get like a yellow, like a light yellow. So I'm like right there on the color wheel. And then the brush that I wanna choose is like a soft brush with a little bit of texture. There's like the airbrush airbrush brushes that are built into Procreate, um, which would work too, but they don't quite, they don't have that texture. So I'm gonna use one of my brushes um, from my multi-tonal marker set. So multi-tonal markers is a set that has three different sets within it. And one of the sets is called flat marker. And within that set, there's a brush called flat filler, <laughs> flat fat filler. <laughs> and that's a brush which has, it's a cool, um, like a soft brush with a lot of texture. Um, so that's the brush that I'm gonna be using. So if you don't have that one, use a soft brush with a lot of texture or just a soft brush. And then I am just basically drawing some, just kind of very lightly putting in some, uh, like just like a soft little feathered shape, <laughs> I guess you would say. Um, so that's what I drew in there. And then I'm going to change the blend mode of that layer um, to make it like look brighter. So if I go to the N, and I, this time I'm gonna go to the blend mode called Add. And that's gonna make everything underneath it like really bright. In fact, probably a little bit too bright. Like it's like super, like super bright. Like they've got their lights on real high. Um, so I'm actually gonna reduce the opacity of the layer a little bit. So go to the this little here and then just kind of reduce the opacity to get it to what you want. And there's our nighttime scene. I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. Um, I'm gonna... I think I'm just gonna lighten this whole thing up a little bit. There we go. All right, sorry, I, I need to stop tweaking. I think every artist knows that. You're like, you need to know when to stop. <laughs> um, so one last thing uh, before, and if you guys have any questions, go ahead and throw them up about this. Um, I'm just gonna show you one more thing and then we're gonna like be done. Um, I'm just gonna select these two layers. So this layer with the yellow glowy things and then the layer with the multiply and that like solid color are the only two things making the scene look like night. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of those layers and group them. And I'm gonna rename the group to night. Oops, night. And then I can just um, hide that group. Oops, there we go turn on that group on and off and I can go from day to night. And that's like the fun, like I thought that was really cool. So I actually ended up making um, this, the day scene and the night scene as a little animated GIF. So if you saw it on Instagram, it like switches back and forth between day and night. And I have tutorials on how to do um, animated GIFs in Procreate, which um, if you guys sign up for that uh, giveaway, you're automatically signed up for our newsletter, which is great because there's a lot of really awesome stuff that comes through the newsletter. Um, but we'll also email everybody afterwards. I'll send you links to that um, perspective class that I talked to you about before. I'll send you links to um, what I just said about the animation thing. So I'll send you a bunch of really cool resources. Yeah. We'll even get you a free color palette for everything that we did today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll also make sure people were asking about what all the brushes were We'll make sure that is in the description of the video when that email comes out too. Absolutely. So it's so fun. <laughs> all right. So we're all done with the drawing. Um, I will take a few questions about this if you guys have any. And if we have general Q&A, we'll get that in, in a little bit. 
And as well, you guys, make sure to sign up for the giveaway. We're going to close that up here in just a minute uh, and be doing that as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll show the link one more time before yeah. we do. Do you have any questions about this drawing, Jeff? Um, what was the brush for the snow on the roof and the tree? Uh, that was actually just my pencil brush from the pencil box set. So Bardo pencil. Um, and then, and no, you guys, any questions beyond this specific, um, drawing piece that we just yeah. drew, we will be doing that during our general Q and A. Yep. So it sounds like maybe we don't have any more questions about this. Doing pretty good, yeah. All right, cool. Let me go back to my slides. All right, you guys. So I would love to see what you made. Um, that's one of the funnest things about doing these tutorials is getting to see all the stuff that you guys make from it and like how you guys customize it and make it your own. Like I love seeing that kind of stuff. So please do tag me. Um, you can do hashtag Bardo Brush. Um, at Bardo Brush is our um, Instagram account. And then I made a special hashtag for this drawing. So if you post this drawing, use the hashtag BB Cozy Cabin. And that way I can see like all of them all together. And it's just like makes my heart sing. And then you guys can go see each other's stuff too, which is really cool. Um, and speaking of like seeing each other's stuff, we have a really good online community. Um, we have a Facebook group called um, Making Art Every Day slash Bardo Brush. And that's where like so many people that follow my tutorials or pass or participate in the Making Art Every Day project, which I'll get to in a second. Um, they all share their work and they're super supportive of each other. So having community is really, really important, especially as we don't get to gather in person right now. Um, so it's really nice to have that online community. All right. All right, you guys, this is your last chance to enter the giveaway. We're going to be giving away some master bundles, which will contain like all those brushes that I used. It's all the brushes that I have um, that I've made. And then an iPad. We're giving away an iPad. So this is your last chance to enter the giveaway. Uh, Jeff will throw up a link one more time in the comments. Uh, link is in the description. Link is in the description. Link is in the comments. For Instagram, link is in the bio. <laughs> we got link in lots of stuff. So. All the links. Yes. All the links. <laughs> All right. And then I mentioned um, while you guys are finishing up before we close the giveaway, um, I just wanted to mention the Making Art Everyday Challenge is something that I've been running for two years now. And what it is, it's a series of daily drawing prompts, tutorials and resources and motivational emails and that awesome community I talked about all with the goal of helping you establish a daily art making practice and we um, do a different theme every month and this month we did a whole series like I do these tutorial series sometimes and it was on scene school so we learned all about drawing scenes there's a lot of really good stuff that you can learn by participating but even just drawing every day is going to get you better at you know, in improving your skills. If you want to learn how to draw better, do it more often. And this really, really helps with that. So I hope you check it out. It's totally free. Um, we're planning out for 2021, like what we're going to do now. And I'm going to send out a survey, like asking what you guys want to see going forward. So I'm excited. So bardobrush.com slash join MAE is where you can find out all about that. Okay, you guys, we're going to close the giveaway now. You ready to close it, Jeff? Closing it up. Okay, so we're going to close the giveaway, and while Jeff is compiling stuff, and like we use a randomizer to pick all the winners, um, so he's going to work on that, and then he's also going to multitask and shout out some questions for me to answer um, so we can go ahead and do a Q&A session. So this is whatever you guys want to talk about. Um, I will talk about it with you. Give me a second, guys, because you guys are asking questions and being in wonderfully lively. Oh, I, uh, good. I love it when there's a lot of questions. Um, Deb, where was your question? Can you ask it again? Um, are we going to announce the winner on the stream? Yes, Deb, yep. we're going to announce the winner on the stream in just a second. Yep, Jeff's got to go and, um, and pull the winners, so we're just going to do some Q&A while he's doing that, um, and then we'll, we'll say who they are. If you... Um, the iPad, if we call your name for the iPad, you must be here and you must say, hi, that's me. And then we're going to have, uh, we're going to send you an email that you have to reply to so that you can claim it. So we make sure that that person is here. Um, 
Okay. Do we, so what, what so questions are you asking about? Actually, a couple of people have asked what screen protector you use. Great question. Um, I use um, a matte glass screen protector. And I've actually become quite partial to the brand that I use. Like, I've tried other ones. And this one's by Clear Look. And it's not anything fancy. It's not one of those paper-like ones that has the texture. Um, I actually tried that and I didn't really like it. Um, I like this one because your pencil just like glides across the screen really smoothly. And that's like, I really love it for drawing. Like I didn't like the friction of the paper like, but some people do. A lot of people do actually, but not me. So, but I do have a link to the one that I use on my FAQ page, which you can find on my website. How many layers was on your drawing? Oh, good question. Let's find out. Actually, if you want to know without having to go through and count, if you want to know stuff about your drawing, you can go to the actions menu, canvas, canvas information. And so we're going to go to where it says layers. And we used 15 layers in this. It will also tell you how many layers available you have for your piece. So this one, I could have gone up to 32 layers. And your layers are dependent on um, two things. And one is the total resolution of your canvas. So if you have a really high res canvas with lots of pixels, you won't get as many layers. Um, if, and then the other thing is your hardware. So if you have like a faster iPad with more RAM, you'll get more layers. So those are the two things that affect how many layers you have. But yeah, there's a lot of cool information. Like you can see uh, statistics. So I spent an hour and 12 minutes of tracked time drawing that picture we just did today. I made a total of 760 strokes. It's kind of fun to see this stuff. Um, so yeah. All right. Um, a couple of people were asking just about layers in general. And I mean, we have a great video um, that kind of talks about layers. I have masks. a video on masks. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will mention, I know I talked a little bit about my tutorials, but I have a lot of tutorials. So if you go to bardobrush.com slash tutorials, um, I have a ton in here and you can, uh, right now you can filter them by what brush set I used in it. And I'm working on getting more filters in here where you can filter it based on like what procreate technique was used and like that kind of stuff. So, but yeah, we've got, a, we've got, we've got a lot of tutorials in there. I do have one on masks. That's really good. And also subscribe to YouTube because you'll get them on YouTube before they get published on here um, because that's where I publish them to first. <laughs> I've got a, a question. Uh, will you create more Procreate canvas textures like magic paper, uh, like parchment, watercolor? Yeah, actually, I have, um, I have some ideas about doing more magic papers in different, like, like I have an idea to do like a printmaker's magic paper where it's all like replicating like print surfaces for uh, like letterpress and um, screen printing and block printing and that kind of thing. And I have got ideas, you guys. This year has been crazy, as you know. Um, and so these ideas that I haven't had time to do because it's been so crazy have been compiling. So 2021, guys, it's going to be my year. <laughs> I'm going to make a lot of new stuff. I can't wait. Um, yeah. Someone's asking um, how to make my stuff not look pixelated when I export my projects. And... Um, that's really just got to depend on the cam the size of the canvas that you use when you start. Like I use, the one that I use today is one that I've been using. Um, I usually don't go any smaller than that, but um, it shouldn't look pixelated unless it's smaller than like, if you're posting to Facebook or Instagram, like whatever their size that they use when they publish 20, it. 2048 by 2048. Yeah. Um, don't go lower than that if you don't want it to look pixelated, but yeah, it shouldn't, it shouldn't if and we actually have a great guide, you guys, oh, on yeah. doing printing, um, for resolution. Good call, so Jeff. Uh, it's this one as well. It's this one here. I'll show it to you too. But this is, if you're worried, if you're asking about print, um, this one, you can put in what size you want to print and then it'll tell you, like, if I wanted to print something that's 8 by 10 inches. Sorry, it's only in inches for everybody that's outside the U.S. I'll try to get one in, in metric later on. <laughs> um, but it'll tell you, for best print quality, you need it to be 300 PPI or DPI. They're used interchangeably, but they are different things. I won't get into that now because I get passionate about it. Um, so you need to have a canvas that's at least 2,400 pixels by 300 pixels to get a good print quality for an 8 by 10. 
And then there's also like if you have a pic if you have a canvas that's this many pixels by this many pixels, how big can you print it? And that's what the second part is. So very handy. Um, all right, let's do let's jump over to giveaway and then we can come back to some QA. Okay, sounds good. Do do giveaway time. All right, so we're gonna start by giving away how many? Six master bundles. We're gonna pick six names, and you guys are gonna win a master bundle, which is all of the brush sets, 14 sets, 284 brushes. Um, that includes that magic paper that we mentioned, which if you don't know what it is, it's really fun. Um, so let's go ahead and pick some names, and if we call your name, we will also email you and letting you know that you won. So let's do it. All right, so our first master bundle winner is Cameron Webb. Congratulations, Cameron Webb. You're a master bundle owner. We will email you the details about that. And uh, next up, we have Danielle Marie Regine Lexamana. Yeah, I love your name. I That was too much for me to repeat, but it sounds very fancy. Danielle. Danielle. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ison Nob. Congratulations, Ison Nob. You're our winner. Uh, we have Melissa Flores. Melissa Flores, you've won a master bundle. Congratulations. Hannah Zarabi. Hannah Zarabi. And we're sorry if we butcher your names. We're doing our best. I'm really sorry. Hannah Zarabi, congratulations. You're a winner. Uh, and Karen Yadira Landon Cabrera. Ooh, another awesome name. I love these names that have a lot of names. <laughs> Good job, Karen. You won as well. <laughs> All right, you guys. Now, we're going to announce our iPad winner. This is exciting. Um, woo -woo -woo. The most important thing for this winner is you will need to email us at info at bardobrush.com. So please get ready to be able to email us. Are we emailing them first or? No, no, they have to. Oh, sure, I can email them. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to call the name. Yeah. Um, we're going to email that person and you have to find that email and like email us back and be like, Hey, yeah, that's me. Um, and as long as you do that, you can win and you have to be here and say that you're here right now. So, um, yes, let's go ahead and do that. If they don't speak up, then we'll pick another winner. So all right. And pays so to stick around guys. <laughs> our winner is Lally Leon. Lolly Leon. Lolly Lolly Lolly. Sorry if we messed up your name. Go ahead and say something in the comments if you're here. Say hi, that's me. Yeah, we're waiting. Uh, and waiting Jeff's gonna just gonna shoot an email to you. In just a second, once we verify that you're on, Lolly, we just need you to message us. Uh, or in the in the chats here. Gotta see that you're live. And then we'll it was the, the, you want to say the name again, Jeff? Lally, L-A-L-Y, Lally. L-A-L-Y, La yeah. and the last name. I mean, there's probably not that many Lallys. Uh, that was Leon. Lolly. Lolly Leon. Lolly Leon. Lolly Leon. Are you live with us, Lolly? Okay, I've got a Lolly. Awesome. I see her in YouTube. All right. Um, All right, shoot us back that email. We're going to, we are sending that email right now. So just go ahead and reply. Uh, you can also email us at info. I see you there, Lolly. We got gotcha. you. Congratulations. I'm uh, really excited for you winning. <laughs> You guys, this is just awesome. Like, we couldn't appreciate all of you guys more. We do this because you guys are able to be here with us and support us. And mm -hmm. we are here for this amazing community that we are really thankful for. Yeah, we really love doing giveaways like this. We've um, we've already given away another iPad this year. Yeah. And we've done um, a couple Apple Pencil, couple Apple Pencil Apple giveaways. Gift yeah, Apple gift cards. Lots of brushes and master bundles. So we like to do giveaways. We like to give back to our community. Um, that's what this whole week has been about. Um, we did like this whole week of giving thing where we did all these giveaways on Instagram. 
um, culminating in this big iPad giveaway, and it's all due to your guys' support, um, whether it's through watching our tutorials or buying the brushes or sharing um, sharing our tutorials, uh, liking, commenting, all that stuff helps us. So please continue to do that. We super, super appreciate it. Um, it, it keeps us doing this kind of stuff that we love to do and um, help support our little family too. So we really, really appreciate it. And we're so grateful for you guys. Thank you, thank you. We've got some fun stuff planned for the rest of the year and into yeah. next year too. So it's and gonna for, be good. For those of you guys, you know, we've, we've basically had a video. We're really trying to keep it so we can have a video coming out almost every week, you guys, because we know that everyone is just needing a little bit of something extra to learn, <laughs> yeah. take up some time and to keep their creativity yeah, this, going. This year has been, it's been a rough year, as I'm sure you guys all know. And, you know, as soon as the pandemic shutdown started, we started doing these live tutorials because we all are, at, we're at home and, you know, we all needed something to take our minds off of what was going on. So that's kind of where we're at. And I think, I think being, doing creative things is really empowering uh, especially when you're going through something difficult and it gives you a form of expression um, and also just takes your mind off of things that might be difficult. So I'm glad to be that for you guys. <laughs> Did we get Lolly's email? We got Lolly's Oh, good there. job, yeah. Lolly. Congratulations. We're super excited for you. I hope you enjoy your new iPad. Um, I just wanted to say again, um, I'm Lisa Bardot. I own Bardot Brush. I make awesome brushes for Procreate and I also run the Making Art Every Day project. Um, where you can learn learn how to draw by drawing a lot, and we'll help you out with that. So, um, do we have any more questions? I think we're we can, good. We, I mean, yeah, we can. If you guys want, we can definitely uh, stay around for another minute or two. For yeah, a couple questions. So we'll I'll we'll answer a few more questions in just a minute. But for everybody else, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Yeah. And then just a heads up for all the Master Bundle winners. So we announced all of you live. We will email you guys later today your codes to be able to get your prizes. Yeah, give us a give us a minute for that. Yeah, <laughs> it's our it's our day after Thanksgiving. I'm still in my pajamas, by the way, guys. I hope you are too, because it's one of those days like you should just hang out in your pajamas all day. Especially if you're in the US because we have the day off work. Most of us do, so Obviously not us. We're working. <laughs> we are working. We are working. All right. So if you guys have more questions, I will stick around for a few more minutes. You can ask me whatever you want. Um, and Jeff's going to throw out the questions to me. So thank you for being here. Yeah. I mean, people have asked, uh, and I've seen that pop up a couple times today. How, how did you start your art career? Mm, that's know. a big question. <laughs> <laughs> um. Prr, where to begin? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've been doing creative things all my life. I went to college for graphic design and photography. I started a photography business um, as I was finishing up. My husband and I started a photography business just as I was finishing up with college that we did for 11 years. Um, and then we kind of slowly transitioned over to what we do now, uh, kind of towards the tw tail end of that. But, um, if you're wanting to know how I got into what I'm doing now, it's, it's really just like my own, um, personal journey to becoming like what I want to be as an artist. And I just started like drawing, like I started drawing every day one year, one year, 2016, I started drawing every day. And that really kind of launched me into what I do now. And that's why I started the Making Art Every Day Project um, Challenge, because it was so helpful to me um, to be drawing something every day as like a form of self-expression and also just giving that myself that time to be creative. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a big question <laughs> that I could go into, um, but it, yeah, just my advice is like keep creating and keep sharing all of it. The process, the struggles, especially the struggles in the process. Like I can't I can't like express that enough. Like yes, people love to see your beautiful finished art, but more so they want to connect with who you are as a human because they'll see themselves in you and they'll see that struggle and that's that connection is really what is needed. Um and that's what really kind of got me to, <clears throat> excuse me, got me to where I am. Um, so I don't know, I'm kind of blathering, but, 
Uh, that's my advice as far as that goes. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, keep going. This all takes time, you guys. For mm -hmm. everyone, and I've seen a lot of people out there be like, oh, this is hard. How do you do this? It's just practice. Yeah. And a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, lots, lots of practice. Try and get, try and do it every day. Even if it's for like 15 to 20 minutes a day, like that, you will see progress, even if for that little amount of time. Even just trying to get something small done that's not very good, you'll probably get more out of that than if you spent a long time doing something trying to get it perfect. Like uh, the, the best stuff that I've, like the most creative stuff I've done is stuff that like I just, I was on a time crunch and I had to think of something and then I came up with something and like that kind of creativity is like what fuels me the most than just like spending forever planning something and then like finally getting around to it or over planning it and never doing it. I do that as well. <laughs> um, someone asked, can you make the background look like a notebook paper, notebook pad? Like the line, uh, yeah, sure. You could draw the lines. We have I showed you that quick line feature. You could draw a bunch of blue lines and a pink line. Or you could scan a piece of binder paper and draw on top of it. That would be kind of cool. So maybe if, if you want me to elaborate on that, let me know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, someone asked if we plan on doing more giveaways in the future. We try and do a giveaway every time we're live. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's uh, at the very least, we try to give away brushes and bundles and things like that every time we go live. Um, and then every now and then we do like a big giveaway like this. So uh, be sure to sign up for our email list. Um, I mean, if you enter the contest, then you're signed up and you'll start finding out about stuff like this. But that's the best place to, to find out about it. Um, In fact, we're pondering doing something big for like New Year's, yeah, so New Year's Day, New Year's Day, Day maybe. Like, see how many want to join us? But yeah, we're thinking, thinking New Year's Day. Yeah, if Day. you guys are all at home chilling, maybe we can draw together and do some fun stuff. Because we'll be starting a new making art every day, twenty twenty one. So it's gonna can be you good. Get the time lapse going of your house, real quick. Can oh, you play it? yeah, great idea. And someone was asking, do you think the Apple Pencil 2 is better than the 1 while you're doing this? Oh, great question. Um, not necessarily. Uh, the Apple Pencil 2 is only compatible with certain iPads, and uh, the Apple Pencil 1 is only compatible with certain iPads. So the the main thing is get the one that's compatible with your iPad. Otherwise, do you like it more? Um, I like sure. I like that it charges by putting it here, like it snaps onto the side, and see it charges. Um, because the other one you had to like stick it, <laughs> you had to like plug it in the side, and it was like super awkward. So that that feature alone is like so much better. But it doesn't like work any better than you know. It doesn't. It's not like does it, maybe it is. I don't know. I can't tell if it's like more pressure sensitive or whatever. Um, but the charging thing that's a big deal. But make sure it's compatible with your iPad. Like, yeah. It's not worth, like, getting a whole new iPad just to get the newer pencil, but it might be worth it to get a new iPad to get a new iPad. So, you know. <laughs> Do it again. Right. Well, I Is that think it? we are going to... Uh... We're going to close up here, you guys. All right, you guys. You. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and I hope you get to relax a little bit. Um, that's definitely what we're going to do. So um, please enjoy the rest of your weekend, and thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.